Hey, what's going on everyone? Nick here. I am excited to be getting started with this first video with you and jumping into the training that we're going to be doing. All of this content is going to be free. It's going to be outstanding. It's going to really help you capitalize on probably what I think right now is the best opportunity available to anyone in the world. Uh, E-commerce is an exploding, absolutely exploding type of business model, trend, whatever you want to call it right now. You can already see I got my stuff up on the screen, some sites I'm going to be going over. Some of you may recognize it already, some of you may not, but believe me, it's all going to get covered. Um, and really where I want to start this video is really going to be all about overview, mindset, and strategy. And it's something that is going to help... Uh, Anybody, really, whether you are brand new to this completely, by the end of the video, you're going to understand what this is all about and what we're going to be doing. Uh, if you've been doing this already and struggling, this may help you understand why you've been struggling when we start to get into the mindset and the strategy and you see the system that I'm using. Uh, and then even if you're advanced as well, you know, it's always good to be taking in new resources and ideas and, and ways to go about things and perspectives. And so I'm excited to get into this with you. As most of you are probably aware, shopping online is now like the, it's, it's basically probably the biggest industry out there right now. Um, in 2015, Cyber Monday actually was more shopped or outsold more or total revenue, whatever you want to call it, uh, worldwide over Black Friday. For the first time ever in history, Cyber Monday was bigger than Black Friday. And that's just a sign of the times. That's exciting for us because Shopify is a platform that allows anybody, as you can see, e-commerce platform made for you, that is now, you know, it's just incredible what's available to people right now to be able to just sign up with a platform like Shopify, get started with a free trial, and then even after that, it's only $30 a month to run a store and be able to reach customers and build a business. And as you've seen, and the reason why you're in this group is do things like make $90,000 a month like I just did in August. So that type of stuff is possible, and it's never been more available, believe me. When I started as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, it was a long road to get here. And Shopify, I don't know if it was around at the time. I didn't know about it. But uh, the last business that I had that we did very well in, you know, we had to build everything from scratch. We had to become proficient in all the different parts of putting a website together. Now, that's helped me, of course, because I have those skills going into the next level of my business. But it's just incredible what Shopify has really allowed people to do. Um, you know, you can target customers anywhere in the world and you can get your items in front of them. Um, so jumping into it, you know, talking more about e-commerce and, and really what Shopify is about uh, as a broad view here. I don't want you to think that there is any specific type of item that you have to sell. All right. One of the things that is going to be important from the very start is you're going to have to especially if you're new to this, or even if you're new to this and you've been struggling, one of the reasons you may have been struggling is because e-commerce and running an online business requires that we relearn the way that we learn, okay? Coming up through standardized education, uh, I can only really speak for American education, but coming up through that type of education system, basically we're taught how to memorize things, formulas and equations, color inside the lines, study the answers so that you can memorize them and then do good on a test and get an A. You know, and that's how high school is, that's how college is, and, and it's really a, a very specific type of learning. It doesn't teach you how to think creatively, how to problem solve, how to really uh, go outside the lines and go outside the box and how to uh, just have new perspectives and, and critical thinking, all right? And that's the type of skill set that you need. It's one of the reasons why so many people have trouble being an entrepreneur is because the way that we're taught to learn things is not the way that you become successful in this type of business, all right? When it comes to learning and what we're doing, and one of the reasons why I'm not going to show you a lot of the products I'm selling right away and, and things that have been making me a lot of money is because I want people to get into the habit of creative thinking where you learn the concepts, you see the strategies, you see the system and practical applications, and, and then you think about it in a way of how you can do the same thing in your business, all right? 
you know, make no mistake from, from this moment right now, if you want to be serious about this, you have to start thinking about yourself as a CEO, as a business, whether, you know, I'm just chilling here in a t-shirt and shorts running a business. I just made $90,000 last month. Make no mistake. That's a business. That's a better business than most people right now in America have. And I know because I see Shark Tank all the time, every week, people coming in who've been in business for months or years and haven't even managed to do that in a total expansion of time over the entire time they've been in business. All right. So to do that in a month, you know, you need to reconfigure the way you think about things. All right. You can have a business from your own laptop, there's no titles necessary, there's no dress code necessary, there's no certain degree or thinking necessary. It just requires you to become the type of person who's going to have perseverance, dedication, and really keep pushing to constantly expand your mind and understand what's possible, and then find the creative applications and how you can do it for yourself and your business, okay? When it comes to Shopify, you can sell anything that you want, all right? Now, one of the best ways to get started, regardless of what you hear anywhere else, I, I don't care what people say, one of the best ways to get started is drop shipping and custom merchandise. And those are going to be two of the main areas that I'm focusing on in the very beginning because, hands down, I don't care what anybody says, they are the best ways to get started because they have a very low barrier to entry, especially drop shipping. Um, which is where you find a product from a third party source, you mark it up for a profit, and you resell it, basically like you see in so many of the major stores and brands that are out there that we shop at every single day. This is just available to you now to do from your laptop and from your home. Uh, you can do the same thing, all right? But those are not the only ways that you have to do this. What we're going to be going over can apply to anything. All right. If you have your own product idea that you've thought of and, and you want to make, like say a certain type of jewelry that you want to make yourself and start a brand yourself, you can do that. All right. That's what I did prior to this. Prior to this, I built a business and I want people to know this because it's important for my credibility. Prior to this, I built a brand. All right. And I'll actually show you guys right now. It's called the I love team.com. And this is a brand that's primarily a photo booth company, as you can see. That's the logo here, iHeart Photo Booth. So this is, uh, it's, it's expanded to many cities across the whole northeastern side of the country. Um, and, and we've done very well. Well, I'm not a part of it anymore. I walked away from it. But this entire website and the entire marketing system that was built here is all me. Um, and, you know, I graciously just kind of walked away from it and let them keep it because I was never the owner of the company. But... Uh, the point is that this is selling a service, all right? This is e-commerce where the service that we sold was photo booth rentals for all different types of events throughout the country. And then we would hire contractors to fulfill those services within the areas that they were booked, all right? So that is a form of e-commerce. Now, we weren't using Shopify because we didn't know about it at the time. And we went through the, the painstaking process of building a website and putting all this together ourselves. But this was a brand that we built from nothing. All right. When we started, nobody knew who we were. We didn't have any customers. We didn't have any people that knew about us. We had a zero dollar marketing budget and we just built something up from scratch to being recognized. As you can see, uh, you know, last year before I left, we were the highest rated photo booth company in the entire nation by Wedding Wire. So that that's possible with Shopify to build a brand like that. All right. You can have your own product. You can have your own service or whatever it is that you want to sell and build a brand through Shopify, okay? Uh, you can also drop ship like we talked about. You can sell information products through Shopify. So if you have a digital product that you want to sell, which is very convenient because it's like, you know, this video, for example, if I wanted to create a bunch of videos, package them up and sell them, you know, it's an instant delivery. Once people pay, they can access to download the product. So you can do that through Shopify. You can sell um, subscription services like uh, there's a company out there, I think, called Gearbox. Gearbox, maybe? Is that what they're called? Um, hmm. Maybe it's not Gearbox. There's, there's a... Is it Nerd Gear? Think Geek, maybe? I don't know. There's... Maybe it's Think Geek. Um... Well, these guys, I mean, here's an example. So you can see they sell, you know, a bunch of different stuff in, in this area. Um, 
but I was trying to find one that has a subscription a subscription service. It was like Think Geek maybe or Geekbox or something. Maybe it's Geekbox. Let's see. Geek Fuel. Oh, Loot Crate. Here, here's here's a good one. Let's look at some of these. I think one of these is the one I'm looking for. Okay, Loot Crate is cool because here's what I was talking about with a shipping service where every month they ship you something. They're calling it a crate and it has something random in it. So, uh, you know, like you can pick a crate and then you sign up for a monthly subscription and they send it to you every single month. All right. So something really cool. I think Geek Fuel is the same thing. Yeah, you sign up and they send you a box of, you know, whatever they're selling of geek goodness for that month. All right. So these are really cool ideas. And I don't know if these sites are powered through Shopify or not, but uh, you can do this through Shopify where you can, you know, a monthly plan and then sell stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this. You can find products online and private label them yourself and build a brand. Or, you know, this is like a, a drop shipping site here where these are not really their products. They're not manufacturing these. They're just drop shipping them and they're making money off of it in all these different categories. OK, so those are all different ways that you can use the same platform. All right. And it's pretty awesome because you can do it for uh, any single type of business that you can think of. There was um, there was something on Shopify that was like people that were selling. Let's see if we can find it. And this is important because I want your awareness to be spread as of all the different things that are out there. So skinny coconut oil. This was a business I remember reading a case study of and thought this was so cool. Now, this is their product that they made and they launched it with Shopify. And as you can see, and you can listen to the podcast, Shopify has a great blog, actually, of all kinds of success stories. Um, you know, they did $800,000. I don't know if they did that in 30 days or if 30 days was just how long it took them to get started up. And that's what they did in a year. Uh, but either way, incredible results. So that's a product they created themselves. Very simple. It's coconut oil in, a, in this little vial here with their uh, branding stamped onto it. So those are the types of things. This guy here, you can see a t-shirt store is what he's doing and all that stuff we're going to go into because custom merchandise is now easier than ever with Shopify and I've sold uh, quite a few shirts over the past couple months um, you know using these different apps that are involved but that's going to be for a different video this is more again there's the overview and the mindset I'm not really getting into the specifics of apps and how to actually uh, do things and create the products in this video all right there's going to be a bunch of stuff it really needs to be broken down into different parts because there's a lot of content and information that I want to share with you so this is mainly right here just to get your mind thinking all right everybody I think should start at drop shipping or custom merchandise unless you already have a product you've been trying to sell or you have a business that you've been working uh, and you're looking to branch out online I think it's where everybody should start and then as you get the skill sets and you learn the game and you understand marketing and you get better and more developed, the exciting thing is just to realize that the sky is really the limit here. And you can just continue to expand and grow. And it's so easy to start a store. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be showing you a store, the very first store that I started that did over $200,000 in sales in about five or six months um, when I got started with this at the beginning of the year. And I'm not using it anymore. All right. It's just dormant right now. I'm not even using it because I've moved on and created a new store. And that's the beauty about Shopify. That's how simple it is. Once you have stores and ideas, you can keep expanding and keep growing and keep moving and, and going forward. All right. So when it comes to drop shipping, where we're going to really get started in custom merchandise, there's two. You know, there's two different areas. Custom merchandise is nice because it's a third party fulfillment. So you create designs and then, um, which I'll, I'll show you some examples here in a minute. You create a design and then they print it. Uh, it's like the site Teespring, if you guys are familiar with this, where the people can launch a shirt campaign, all right? And then you can advertise this and anybody can buy it who wants to buy it, all right? So, that once somebody buys it, then Teespring prints it and actually ships it and handles the customer service and the fulfillment and all of that. And you can make a ton of money doing this because all you have to get good at is creating the designs and marketing them. 
uh, which I'm going to show you and go over. And once you get good at that, then you have somebody who's just fulfilling everything else for you. So it's a really hands off business. And, uh, you know, the type of freedom and money and lifestyle it can provide is incredible. All right. Drop shipping is very similar. Uh, in that you can find a product and sell it and then people, you know, it's a third party fulfillment. All right. The only difference is you're going to be the one handling the customer service and things of that nature when it comes to drop shipping. Um, and, you know, some people, I guess a note about drop shipping, some people like to order in bulk and ship the stuff themselves. And, you know, that's something that you can absolutely do. Me personally, I created this business to live a, a free life and, and have a great lifestyle. So I don't want to be, you know, stuck uh, with a bunch of packages to mail out every single day. That would be absolutely insanity. So, uh, but the beauty about drop shipping is that you don't have to have any inventory to start. So again, it brings the barrier really low for entry because you are actually going to be selling the products first and you don't have to put any money out until you've already been paid for the product. So there's really no risk involved. And that's one of the things that makes this so beautiful is it's such a low risk opportunity that you can get involved and start at your own pace and get good at. And then as you get better, you can scale and you're drop shipping. So you're constantly getting paid before you have to put money out for the product. And that allows you to test things and, and really move around and be very flexible in your business. And then, you know, drop shipping again, third party fulfillment. So you don't have to order in bulk and ship it out yourself. Some people choose to do that and they want to act like it's cool because they got a bunch of packages at their house. But at the same time, you know, I prefer not to do that because I would just rather have somebody else do it and uh, just sit back and collect the sales and run the customer service. All right. So that's an overview of what Shopify is and what is available to you right now. So I hope your like your wheels are spinning. All right. And a good exercise, which I'm going to come back to and remind you at the end here is to really start thinking of what are called niches. So you want to start thinking of some niches, some areas of interest that you can uh, pursue, like say the dog niche or the cat niche or the, you know, just the animal lovers niche in general, or, you know, as I'm going to show you one here, the steampunk niche. You know, there's so many different niches out there and basically all niches is a certain demographic of people who share a common interest. So all people who love cats, all people who love dogs um, and, you know, you're able to find products in those areas and then reach those people through social media to sell these products. All right. And the only money that you have to put out up front is just the money to run your store. Uh, and the money to have some, you know, a budget for testing ads because we are going to be talking about paid traffic. Uh, and there are free traffic methods, but paid traffic is where I'm going to start because it's, it's an investment. You're not wasting money when you know what you're doing and you're using a system like I use because you're putting money out to make money back. And it very much can become like an ATM. You know, if you know the audience that you're targeting and you find a good product, then you know that you can reach those people for say, you know, it's say it's like $5 to get a purchase. All right. And if this is all new, you know where we're going to go into it more, but just as an example, say your marketing cost is $5 in ads to get one purchase on a product, but that product is selling for $20 with a, a $15 profit. Well, now you're basically in a situation where every $5 you put in, you're getting $15 out. So in profit, you're getting out. Um, and, you know, it just becomes an incredible thing that you can just continue to grow and expand and, and make a, a good amount of money doing. So I'm going to go over all of that with you. But for now, I wanted to give you an overview, starting with what Shopify is and what type of business is available to you right now. And I would absolutely suggest coming to the Shopify website and looking around, seeing the different types of businesses that are on Shopify and what different people are selling, the different uh, brands that are out there and, and things that are being used by Shopify. It's pretty incredible. You can come right here to the blog and see all kinds of different businesses that have been started on here. Uh, a lot of different ideas and tips and resources. Um, they have a whole resources section, actually, success stories where you can come and, you know, just by clicking on this, you can see their store right, right here. 
And so this is a Shopify run store and these are themes that are very plug and play. And again, don't worry, we're going to go over themes in a different section. So you don't have to be technically advanced and know how to code. And uh, you, I mean, design is a good thing to know. And I'm going to go over design with you. But, um, you know, this is all very much plug and play, drag and drop kind of deal. So, you know, and what they're selling on here looks like different types of wallet cases and covers for phones and uh, you know, that type of thing. So again, this is a brand that they've created and you can see are probably manufacturing themselves. Um, but you could also start a brand where you're drop shipping a wallet that you find. And, you know, it's all about branding and how you present it. Presentation is everything. Everything in business is always going to come down to how you present it to people. You know, a lot of people get started or they get involved in this and they say, oh, well, if you're just taking products from somewhere else and reselling them, that's not going to work. How are people going to pay money for something that they could get somewhere else for a cheaper price? Because it comes down to presentation. You know, trust me, I, I've done this. And I've, you know, in the last business where we were selling photo booths, our markup was always great. You know, in the business that I'm running now, the markup is great. I'm making money hand over fist and I'm delivering a great product at the same time. All right. It's not about, you know, ripping people off, delivering a great product at a fair retail price. But you're just smart enough to find it where it's on wholesale. And so you're making a profit for delivering and bringing that product to that audience. OK, it works. Just trust me. It works. It's being done whether you realize it or not. All across the Internet, every mall you go to, every major chain store, some of those items may be manufactured in personal brands. But a lot of those items are drop shipped right from China. You just don't realize it because it's a massive massive company that's doing it behind the scenes through their own warehouse and then they're putting their own tags and labels on it and you know presenting it to you in a way that you don't even realize the difference you think it's a fair retail price and so you're willing to pay okay that's all this is just on a smaller level where we're able to do it ourselves from our laptop again you know it's it's a beautiful thing that this is available to people right now so the next thing that I want to talk about now that we've gone over Shopify and I think I've given you a really good overview of, of how this works and the different types of things available to you uh, and, you know, really hopefully getting your mind moving into what types of things you can sell. I guess the only last thing I'll say on that before moving on is just remember you can sell anything you want. OK, as long as you can make it happen and you have a way to advertise it, you can sell anything you want. And we're going to get more into that in, in later videos because it's a huge topic to talk about when it comes to niches and product selection and audiences. OK. Where we source products from is the next thing that I want to talk about, because, of course, we're talking about Shopify. You can sell anything you want. And we're talking about most people are probably going to start with the drop shipping curve. So where to source these products that we're going to be drop shipping from? Well, that's why this website is open right here. You may or may not have heard of AliExpress. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a huge site, billion, billion dollar company. I think that rivals or even maybe out competing Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure if they are or not, but they're definitely right up there in the same category. It's just a lot of people in America don't know about it. This is a worldwide site that has gained a lot of its fame and popularity and users from other countries before it became popular in America. OK, so for those of you that know about AliExpress, you can see I'm an A4 seller and I have, you know, tons, tons and tons of orders that I've done well over probably getting close to about 10,000 orders now so far this year. So it works. You can find great stuff on here and. Um, you know, let's just go to a quick example here, I guess. Let's go to women's clothing. I'm not doing this for any particular reason other than to click on something and, and show you the type of stuff that's available. Let's go to scarves. All right. So here's an item and I'm going to get into in another video talking about how to search for items again product selection using AliExpress and all that stuff this is just meant to be the overview video to get your mind working and understand the whole process of what we're doing here all right here's a product that sells for 731 on AliExpress let's take a look at it they have all these variations all right it's the same vendor you can see that there's ratings up here that you can look at, feedback, scores, votes on the product, how many orders have been made on this product. 
and then you can see all the different variations. Not every product has variations. This one does, though. And this is the price, $7.31 a piece, all right? That's a wholesale price. Everything on AliExpress is wholesale. And it comes with free shipping to the United States, all right, via ePacket, which is something that we always use. Again, I'll go into that more when we talk about products and shipping. But uh, ePacket is a USPS service from China where it can be tracked on USPS.com just like anything else, all right? It takes two, two to three weeks for delivery, but um you know we'll talk about how you frame that and present that on your site uh in the future so the idea here is that if you want to get into a niche selling scarves or the scarf niche, well i guess it would be the women's fashion niche and one of the things that you want to sell is scarves which could actually be you know very popular and could sell a lot for you it's not a bad idea um you would take these images again stuff we'll talk about uh, you'll take this image and basically put it on your website, the same as they have it here. You'll create a name for the product and everything, write a description in, and you will be selling this product. The only difference is instead of $7.31, you might sell it for $19.99 or whatever the going rate is for a decent scarf right now. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but usually you can at least double whatever the price is on here. And the whole idea with what you want to do when you're looking for products is look for stuff that has a high perceived value. Remember, we're selling quality stuff. We're not just looking to make a quick buck because trust me, that doesn't work in any business. So if you think for any, you know, any second here that the money I'm making is by scamming people or, you know, just selling just crappy stuff, then you're you're mistaken because you cannot get to that level of sales selling a product that people don't want and it isn't good quality and that people don't enjoy when they receive, all right? So you want to find good quality stuff, and AliExpress absolutely has good quality stuff. If you have any reservations right now about, oh, you know, it's manufactured in China, not the USA, you need to get over that quickly, okay? Because that's the way the world works. And yes, there are companies that manufacture in the United States, but... Uh, for every company that does, there's probably three more that are manufacturing in China or somewhere overseas, and you're buying that stuff every single day without even realizing it, okay? So that's something that you just need to get over quickly and understand that you can get very good products from China at a wholesale price, and you can make money, all right? We're here to make money. We're here to start a business and grow it, and someday when you've made thousands and thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars and you come up with your great idea, you know, you can start your own manufacturing, sourcing here in the U.S. and, and sell a U.S. product, but the whole idea here in the beginning is to leverage and get to that point of financial freedom where you can make your own decisions and be in a spot of having a choice, okay? So AliExpress is one place where you can find products. Again, I'm going to get much more in depth on this in a later video. Um, other places that you can source products are the all famous eBay, which I personally don't like, but I'm going to mention because I know people do use it. Very similar to AliExpress. You'll notice that uh, on eBay, when you find a lot of different things that are on here, like if we go to scarves, A lot of these are also going to come from China. Even though it's eBay, you know, stuff comes from all over the world. Sometimes you can find better prices on here and you can find better things. Uh, the ordering process is a little different, but let's like look at this one. For example, it's got 9,400 sold. International shipping coming from China. So again, same type of deal. And then on eBay here, people know it's coming from China and it's still selling that much. So again, it's all just in how you're going to frame it. Um, people are going to buy stuff and, you know, most people are not going to care that it comes from China. You may have one or two people that complain about it out of the thousands of orders I've done. I've had maybe a handful. I could count it on two hands of people that have complained and you're never going to be able to please everyone. All right. So those are probably the same people that would, would complain even if it came from the U.S., honestly. Um, so eBay is another place that you can source products from. Uh, and Etsy is another place. Now, this is one that not a lot of people are talking about. I'm going to go over some really cool stuff with you in Etsy because uh, there's some really great ways that you can use Etsy, and it's something that I'm working on right now, uh, being able to source stuff from Etsy, which basically is the same deal. If you're in a certain niche and you want to find items that are on sale here, the, you're just going to reach out to the person who's the Etsy vendor and say, hey, listen, I have an online 
that shop. I would really love to feature your product in it. I think we can sell a lot of them. Are you willing to, uh, you know, work with me on a wholesale basis where, you know, you're able to produce a decent amount of these and sell them? So it's something that can can work amazing because Etsy has a lot of unique stuff on it that you can get in front of people. And if you're able to work out a deal with a vendor, then you know you can you can have a, a great product for sale that benefits both parties. Remember, at the end of the day, you're always going to be trying to work out something with the vendor if you can, because it benefits both parties. All right, they're making a profit you're getting them customers and you're making a profit, all right? It's exposure for them. They don't know how to market. Marketing is really the secret sauce to all of this. If people want to know what the secret is in this, it's learning how to market, all right? And what I'm going to show you is, is going to teach you how to market. And once you understand it, you can sell anything, all right? You become a very highly skilled professional. They can sell anything and people will want to work with you. If you can sell their product and they don't know how to market, then it's a win-win situation, okay? So Etsy is another place we're going to talk about where you can source products. Um, there's some U.S. spots as well. DHgate is one of them. Uh, actually, this is China, but uh, it's something very similar to AliExpress. Price is a little bit higher. You know, you're going to have to consider markup when or your profit margin. Uh, here's like they have a whole stock in the USA. Uh, AliExpress does as well. AliExpress has some items that ship directly from the U.S. or have quicker free shipping to the U.S. Um, and worldwide shipping as well. So this is this is another cool one um, that you can use. And then the last one, I know even some people are using like Overstock.com. Now, this is going to be like the best shipping option uh, because it's based right in the U.S., but your profit margins are going to be really thin in here on most items. So, you know, it's an idea and a place that you can see trending products and get ideas. But since they're wholesale, but they're like American wholesale rates, you know, your your prices are still going to be a little bit higher. Your profit margin is not going to be as great. And you would have to really be trying to move a volume in here. But like something like this, for example. This is actually a perfect example. This this is an awesome awesome item here. I mean, if you if you're advertising to the Texas area, you know this could be something that could really sell. But again, you know that's your profit margin is not going to be high because this is already a lot of money to pay for this. You know, one hundred and thirty two dollars is already a lot of money. So you can't charge much more than that. Maybe you could mark this up to $149 and sell it because it's, you know, that's not that big a difference. And this seems like a decent size item. Um, but, and free shipping actually is pretty cool. So, uh, but again, that's, that's the trade off here is that you're not, your profit margin is not going to be as high as you might like it to be. Okay. So those are all some where uh, some sources, of, well, some ways and some sites of where we can source products. All right. So that's walking you through from uh, the platform that we're going to use and the type of business model that you can build and what this is all about uh, to where we're going to be able to find products. And again, this is where you start getting ideas. You see all these categories here. Every single one of these you could consider a niche and they even break down into sub niches. All right. These are all categories that you could get involved in if you wanted to. You have to realize from the get go that if you want to be successful in e-commerce, you're going to have to do your research, find categories you're interested in, find niches you think you can sell products in and search out some good products. And then really what you are doing when I show you the next part here is how we sell these items is we're reaching people directly through social media and other traffic sources, okay? So a lot of people will look at it and they say, well, okay, you know, I understand e-commerce, Shopify gives you a way to build a business model, a great platform to use that makes it really easy and takes away all the technical stuff that, you know, used to be a high barrier to entry for people. Uh, I understand that there's a lot of great wholesale sites out there and basically we can find good products and, uh, you know, we can source them and then we can mark them up a little bit and, and put them on our store for sale. But why would people buy from us instead of just going to the site itself, right? Why are, why are people going to come to my site and purchase, okay? And that's something that um, is going to happen through social media, all right? And you're just going to have to trust that it works because I understand it can sound counterintuitive. You're here because you're an aspiring entrepreneur. You think outside the box and you're looking for opportunities. You know, so you're probably thinking, well, I would just do the research because you may be that type of person. 
all right? But by and large, the majority of people in America, which is going to be the main country we're targeting in the beginning because it's got the highest buying power, uh, you know, and lots of people available to target it over like it's like 350 million people in America now. You have to realize that most of them are number one lazy and most of them number two don't care. All right. If they see an item they like and you present it in the right way, it's going to become something of an impulse buy. All right. And it's a different approach to selling. Now, when it comes to e-commerce, remember, you can build a store where you're the only one offering a certain type of item, right? Like that coconut oil. They're the only one offering that type of item. Well, maybe not the only one, but it's a market that there's not a lot of players in. And so that's a different strategy where they're just reaching everyone they can. They might be trying to optimize their store for search engines and so people can search them uh, and run Google AdWords and, and everything. All right. But for what we're going to do with drop shipping and getting started is we're really going to look for the types of items that speak to people's passion. All right. I call them passion products. Uh, I didn't really coin that term. It, it's not brand new, but it's important to understand because that's why people purchase when they see something in their Facebook newsfeed. All right. Primarily how we're going to be selling is through Facebook. Okay. And I'm going to show you an example here of a page that I created. Uh, and a product that I'm going to scroll down to in a minute. So primarily how people are selling uh, and what we're going to be focusing on is through Facebook ads. And the reason that we're doing that is because it's very accessible. Uh, it's not that difficult to learn. It has amazing targeting capabilities where you can literally say people that are interested in dogs. I have this dog product and I'm going to show them in their newsfeed. I'm sure we've all been on the receiving end of seeing a product in our newsfeed. OK, it's not that difficult to do it. And if you do it correctly, you can find the people most likely to purchase your item and put it in front of them. All right. And the other reason is because it works. Social, be, social our Facebook is where people are on being social every single day and they're you know the average person they're saying now is on Facebook for like two hours a day all right and you're able to put advertisements in front of them for cents on the dollar you know it, it's insane the the way that Facebook has changed the game when it comes to being able to reach your target customer and start a business all right and so you're able to get these impulse type buys. And as you can see here, I started a page and I'm going to show you this because most people, this is a really small niche and most people are not going to be interested in this. Um, I'm not steampunk by any means. I just came across the niche and thought it was interesting and being underutilized. And so I wanted to try selling some items. All right. This is an item I saw. Uh, saw. I sold a few of these and then stopped it. I was just testing it. Um, but these sunglasses are the main one. I sold a couple thousand dollars worth of these sunglasses. Um, probably about two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars or so, um, you know, over maybe a month's period. So it's a great little case study because, you know, let's just put it this way: I was able to spend a couple hundred dollars in ads and bring back for myself in return, um, you know, a monthly salary basically for the average person in America. I was able to make like probably, I don't know, fifteen hundred dollars in profit on these, which after taxes, you know, somebody who's making two grand, twenty five hundred a month. You know, that's that's pretty substantial money to just put up an ad, put up a post, get it running and then just let it automate and do its thing and be getting sales every day. All right. And the whole purpose of this, as you can see, we're going to break this down more later. Again, this is just meant to be the overview is that we're selling through Facebook. So this was a post that I made and then I targeted people who are in this audience for steampunk. And, uh, you know, it, it just kind of goes viral right it's got 2.1 thousand likes it's got 504 shares 85 comments people saying love them um you know and if i were to go back here you'd say people saying they bought them can't wait till mine get here um pretty much exactly what you've been looking for i want a pair so this is what happens guys this is how you can reach people in facebook when you understand what you're doing you understand how to use facebook ads and what's called targeting um, which is basically telling Facebook the people that you want to reach for the product and the ad that you want to launch. Okay. And so this was an item I found on AliExpress, um, on AliExpress for maybe six bucks and I was selling them for 19.99. You know, my average cost per purchase was like $6. So 
uh, for twelve dollars fulfillment, I was making seven dollars in profit or something like that every single time. Oh well, they were nineteen ninety nine plus shipping. I'm sorry, so it was twenty four bucks total I was making on each one. So each one I was basically making twelve dollars, which is a good profit margin, right? They were free shipping, and I was charging shipping. So you know I'm I'm making twelve dollars profit on each one of these, and I sold a bunch of them. All right, and it's just really, you know, this is this is what's available. That's kind of the breakdown of how we're doing this from Shopify to where we're sourcing products to how we're selling products. There are other ways to sell uh, and get traffic, okay? And I'm going to talk about traffic in more detail, um, especially for those people I know that are new. You, that may be like, this may be all a lot of information at once. But just understand that really the whole goal, the whole game is that you want to get eyeballs on whatever it is you're selling. You want those eyeballs to be interested, targeted people that are most likely to purchase that item, okay? And then you want to find as many different ways as you can to get those eyeballs on your product so that you can make purchases, all right? With Facebook, a lot of times right now, I'm primarily using Facebook because it's able to generate me enough money, all right? All $90,000 I made last month was through Facebook ads. I spent about $18,000 to bring in $94,000 in sales, all right? So that's the whole uh, concept of money in, money out. And then there was like $30,000 in product cost to do that. And so my overall profit at the end of the day was somewhere around $40,000 last month which I know is insane and it's awesome and it's the same type of stuff that I'm going to be showing you how to do, all right? So the other ways I'll just mention briefly that you can get traffic. Uh, Instagram is one and Instagram is an option you can use through Facebook because Facebook owns Instagram and then there's other ways you can get Instagram traffic as well. We'll go over that because although I'm not using Instagram actively, I've studied it and researched it. I understand it in depth, but I just haven't found it as valuable yet as Facebook ads, honestly. Um, and I've been switching my stores around a lot. When you have one set store is when you can really start trying to push as much traffic from different sources as you can. But me kind of switching stores, testing a lot of things, it just hasn't been worth my time yet to really start digging into all these other traffic sources. But I've used them in the past on other businesses, all right? Uh, Pinterest is another one. Pinterest is not only a great source for ideas, which we're going to cover when we get to product research and niche research, but uh, Pinterest also now has a paid advertising platform. You can get um, a lot of stuff in there. And again, there's free ways to advertise on Pinterest, just like they're all on Instagram. Search engine optimization or SEO, you may be familiar with this. That's a way that you can optimize your website to show up in sites like Google and Yahoo when people are searching for something. That's another way. That's one of the primary ways that I built the I Love team uh, from nothing to what it was, is using a lot of search engine optimization to get ranked in Google so that when people were searching for photo booths in certain areas, they would find our website. Google AdWords is another way of using Google where you can run ads. Like if you go to Google and you type in... Um, Photo Booths Philadelphia. Here you can see one. They still have my ads running because they work. My Google AdWords game was on point. Uh, I haven't, again, yet found uh, my, it's not necessary for me yet in my Shopify store, um, but this was for the I Love team right here. Um, based on somebody searching for this, this AdWords shows up, and we made, and I'm sure they're still making a lot of money running this type of marketing all right so it can be very very advantageous um, and it's something that we'll talk about more and then some other things twitter is a source that i know some people use it's really hard to monetize um, reddit is another way that you can get your products out there if you know what you're doing some of those forum type sites uh, and then even groupon and living social if you have this the right type of product uh, it won't really work as much with drop shipping, but if you are coming in with your own product and your own brand, you know, Groupon and Living Social can be a great way to get a lot of traffic um, and really start building your brand awareness. All right. Now, having gone through all of that, now what I want to show you, I think I've given you a really good overview of the mindset and the process that we're using. Now I'm going to break down my exact strategy for you, okay? 
And this is where I hope it really comes together for you, what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to then refer back to that steampunk example so you can see it all in action. All right. So for the uh, here's here's the way it's all broken down. There are two different ideas when it comes to a Shopify store, and that's that you can start a general store like an Amazon, for example, that sells everything uh, or like that one or you can. Yeah, or no, we didn't look at it yet. I'm sorry. Never mind. Like in a, a general store like Amazon. That's what I'm trying to say. I confused myself. Uh, that basically sells everything and you have a general type name, which I'm going to show you my example in a second. My store, my original store was called Trend Sparks. So again, just a general name that, you know, could sell anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's just something that could have any type of product in it. All right. Then you're going to have your product page. All right. So within your store, you'll have your different products and, you know, they'll be based in collections or whatever, because you can have as many different products and as many different collections as you want inside of your store. And that'll be your individual products that you're selling. All right. For each product that you want to advertise, you're going to have, or let me, let me rephrase that for each niche that you want to advertise products in. All right. So for example, here, I wanted to advertise these retro steampunk glasses. That's the steampunk niche. All right. So for each product that you want to advertise, you're going to have a Facebook page that corresponds to that niche. All right. So here, here it is. Let me, let me show you the next step. Here's my website, trendsparks.com. Uh, and again, I'm showing you guys this because this is a site that was active and, and made $216,000 over about a six month period, but I'm not using it right now. And you would see that if you went here and tried to buy something, my store is actually paused. Uh, all my best selling products, except for the retro glasses have been moved from this to a different store. So, you know, I, I don't mind sharing this with you guys. Uh, and this is still a lot of value you can see here because this is still the same type of way that I set up my stores. So anyway, I have the basic store trend sparks. All right. So if we look at the strategy, that's my Shopify store. And then this is the product page, retro steampunk glasses. As you can see, selling them for $19.99 with a ongoing promotion that makes it look like they're $15 off. Uh, a few different styles available. All this stuff easy to do inside of your store. And then I have the Facebook page for that niche. So you can see I have other stuff in the steampunk niche that comes up down here because it's called a collection. All right. So I'm going to talk about this more in detail when we set up the stores. But basically within my store, if you go to shop, you would see down here eventually the collection for steampunk styles. So this is a collection that has three different items in it. All right. Uh, and you can see all of these are collections. So that's kind of how you set your store up is you're going to have different stuff in collections. This Coffee Life collection, I was selling some shirts. This shirt here, Life is Too Short for Bad Coffee, I sold quite a few of these. All right. And this is all the coffee collection. So if I click on this shirt, at the bottom here, you'll see we also recommend. And it's going to bring up everything else in that collection. Okay. So that, that's the type of deal there. Uh, and that's what the steampunk styles is here. So if they are on this product at the bottom, they're also going to see the other products in the collection. And I can advertise any of those products through this page, which is what you see here. The steampunk styles. I also uh, advertise this steampunk pocket watch here. All right. So that's the way the strategy works in correlation from your products to your Facebook page. You want to have a Facebook page specifically for the product. So another one I can show you a page that I'm running that's very new. Uh, I'll show you in a second actually because I want to finish this strategy overview. Because the last part is the ad. All right. So you have the page and then you have the ad, which is what this was um, right here. All right. This post is what became my ad. It was a sponsored post and I was running it. So this is the ad. It links directly to the product page, not to the home page, not to the shop page. It links directly to the product page and that allows people to come here. And if they want to buy, they, they pick which one they like and they hit add to cart and then they go through the checkout process. All right. So 
that is the overview of how this works. You can have as many different ads as you want running to this page, which is all based for people in that niche. And then it'll just link to whatever product page, right? So if we come back here and we look at this top one, it's the same exact Facebook page. And then this is a new product with a new link. And when they click it, it takes them directly to the retro steampunk pocket watch. Okay. And then down here, you can see in the collection, it shows the other stuff. So I hope that's making sense and, and it's really clear on what we're doing here with this strategy because a lot of people aren't doing it this way and this is why right here from the very start with the basics people are having so much trouble with this okay is you will it's all based around that niche Facebook fan page which allows you to run as many products as you want over time to that audience of that specific niche so for this one steampunk or you could do one for you know, um, like fishing, or you could do one for EDM, like you saw in my collections. So you can run the different products for that. Uh, and then you have the different ads. So let me actually show you the EDM one, because this is a cool one that I've done. And it's pretty new still. Uh, that's not it. EDM life. No, I don't. I think it was actually called I Love EDM. Forget what my own pages are called. Yeah, this was it. All right. So, and you can see this is it because it says go to Business Manager to Manage Page. That will only come up if it's your page. All right. So, um, I you can see I advertised a couple different shirts here. Some of them work. Some of them different. This piece is dope shirt. Didn't really do anything. This marshmallow shirt here uh, did a lot. This did well. And this is my own interpretation of a DJ's mask that wears this type of thing here. Um, I drew that myself. Uh, that's not his logo or anything. We're going to talk about trademark stuff in a different video. But um, basically, this, this didn't go super viral. I didn't run it too long because my cost per purchase wasn't as low as I wanted it to be. And I was getting ready to go on vacation. But um, I also did this shirt as well here which is a design I grabbed off AliExpress and just put it on a shirt myself. Uh, and both of these actually sold a decent amount and you can see them in my store right here. Here's the EDM cat shirt. Here's the marshmallow head shirt. Um, so, and I have a couple other shirts in here that I designed. So, you know, that's, that's the general concept here. All right. Again, same strategy. I have my, I love EDM page. Each one of those posts represented an ad that I was running. So this one was an ad. This one was an ad. This one was an ad. Um, so that's they all represented different ads that were running through that page, all directly linking to the product page, all part of my general Shopify store. OK, that's how I'm going to recommend people start with a general store. You can start with a niche store, but more often than not, every person I hear that starts with a niche store ends up saying, it's not working for me. What do you suggest I should do? And that's because they jump into a niche without really knowing if it's going to be profitable for them or not. A general store allows you to test lots of different things and then branch off into a new store if you want to. Like I did with my best selling product, which I'm not going to show. It used to just be a collection on here. And once it started doing really well, I took everything out and moved it to its own store. And now it's in its own store, running a niche store until I decide to end that store or whatever. Um, and, you know, that's what I could do with some of these. If these, like EDM Life, I plan on growing into its own store. I just haven't had time with, you know, traveling the world to uh, really get into that as much right now. So, uh, and a, a good example, there's also a hybrid idea as well where you can run like a niche general store, which would be that heat box or... Um, What was it called? Geek Think? I think it was called Geek Think, right? Or oh, Think Geek. <laughs> uh, this is kind of what they did. This is a general store. They're selling all kinds of different items. However, it's niche at the same time because they're only sticking to this type of comic, uh, geek type, you know, fan, fan stuff. Uh, you know, they're not selling things in the fishing niche or the, the hunting niche or the home goods niche. They're just selling stuff within these. Uh, geek type of niches, but it's still a general store because they're selling all kinds of different things. So that's like a hybrid idea, um, which also can work very well. But my suggestion would be not just limiting yourself to one niche. Like limiting themselves to one niche would be just going into Star Wars and only selling Star Wars products and making a store called something like StarWarsStuff.com, you know, 
which is not a good idea anyway because, you know, unless you have a, an agreement with Star Wars, you're not going to be able to do that for very long without getting shut down. But you get the idea. I'm just, I'm just making a case in point. So it would be like if you're going to sell hunting stuff, you don't just want to go into the deer hunting section and only specifically sell like deerhuntingstuff.com. You would want to go into, you know, huntingstuff.com, which those domains are not available, but you get what I'm saying. Huntingstuff.com and sell things for deer hunting and bird hunting and, you know, archery and uh, rifles and all kinds of different hunting stuff, right? Not just limiting yourself to one little section. All right, so I would stick with general either way, whether you go super general like I did with TrendSparks where you can sell within anything uh, or if you do like a, a niche general store like this where you're sticking to a certain type of product but you're still selling whatever you want within that product, okay? That's an overview of this strategy. I hope you guys are excited by now. I hope your mind is just like absolutely running a mile a minute or even faster than that, like 1,000 miles a minute right now with ideas. And what you want to do is start putting those ideas down on paper, okay? Um, the other things involved in this, as you can see, are going to be design. Design is important, all right? Now, I know most of you are not coming to this with a graphic design background. Uh, that's been a big advantage for me because I do have a graphic design background and I have Photoshop uh, and the whole creative six suite. But the advantage for you is that I can share with you the principles of design and content uh, and color and, you know, putting things together in a way that's pleasing to the eyes. And uh, really, as you can see, I adopt a very minimal kind of style where a lot of white space, very clean, structured and open. Um, you know, good fonts and, and just easy to read and process and um, using different subjective things that allow trust like an 800 number and a, a support and different things like that. So we're going to talk about all of that when we get into it. I'm going to have some specific things that I, some specific training I release on design uh, and graphics to, you know, both ways. I'll help people with Photoshop who have design skills learn some of the tricks of the trade that I use to be able to keep all of this moving and, and looking very professional without having to outsource. Uh, and then I'll also talk about how you can outsource it and also as well free programs that you can use if you don't have Photoshop, which only costs $10 a month if you want it. But there's also free programs you can use as well and different things that are very simple to learn that can help you when it comes to design. Okay. So in closing, I think uh, where I'll finish with this is just talking about the mindset of, of where, you know, going back to the beginning, I talked a little bit of the mindset in the beginning, and I just kind of want to wrap back in there and end this video over, around an hour long with the type of mindset that you need to make sure you adopt going forward from this. Number one, I want you to know that this is possible for anybody. I've never seen more success stories popping up all over the internet, and I've been involved in following stuff online for years. Uh, then what's happening right now and the reason is because it, it's just number one it's still very new all right if you guys think that this is saturated and a lot of people are doing it you're you're mistaken and you're going to miss the boat because this is still very very new there's still a lot of ideas out there there's still a lot that can be sold and really it comes from you want to adopt a mindset of creativity okay a, a really good book to read if you've never read it is called the science of getting rich um by who's it by let's look it up actually i may share it i may share it with you guys i have this on pdf maybe i'll share this with you guys uh, i think it's by waddles science of getting wallace d waddles okay really good book to read uh, to help you get in the abundance mindset of how you're going to be successful in business okay because a lot of people come from a competitive mindset, a scarcity mindset, where they think there's only so much available in the world. There's so much competition out there, and there's only so many people, you know, that can be successful. And if this person becomes very successful and well off, then that means there's, you know, at least a thousand other people out there that, because of that, are no longer going to have that opportunity. And that's a very, very bad mindset to be in. And a lot of us, unfortunately, are raised that way without even knowing it because of the type of just education that we get in this uh, in standardized education right now. But business is all about having a creative and abundant mindset where you realize you're not really in competition with anybody because you're coming from a place of creativity. Okay. When we began in the photo booth niche, it was highly competitive. All right. 
but one of the things that set us apart is deciding from the very beginning how do then this was how my whole marketing has always been from that to Shopify now and it's why I continue to be successful because I always think about things not as what are other people doing and how I do it the same but what are other people doing and how can I creatively apply that in my own way and be different in my own business all right it's going to take some thinking you're going to have to adjust the way that your mind works to get good at this because it's not natural to us all right it's not natural the way society is they want to pull us down and keep us in conformity but when you start coming from this abundant creative mindset you realize that there's enough money to go around out there for everybody and success is abundant and anybody can have this and make this happen if you're willing to put the time and effort in and realize that you're not in competition with anybody but yourself all right once you start operating from the creative side of your mind and realizing that all you have to do is be different and you know be creative and unique in the way that you present things and the way that you go about doing things and that you want to take what I teach you and what others are doing and what others are having success with and make it your own all right yes there are fundamentals and principles that you want to follow because they work but at the same time you want to try to find the ways that you can do things in your own way because that's what's going to make you unique and different and able to have your own type of message and, and uh, creativity that's really going to allow you to stand out and do well. All right. And the beautiful thing about that is that there's no limit to how creative you can be. There's no limit to how many different types of uniqueness can be out there in the world, regardless of how many people start e-commerce, right? And for all the copycats out there, you're just going to stand out even more by thinking in this type of way. Because whether it sounds simple or not, it's actually really a pretty advanced concept. And I know that because most entrepreneurs are failing right now. I see it all the time, every single day. Whether they're entrepreneurs or they're real entrepreneurs, most of them are failing and it's because they're constantly thinking that they're in competition with everybody around them and it's a really hard to get ahead that way. And even if you do get ahead that way, it's hard to maintain that because you're constantly going to be looking at the other person and keeping yourself in competition and people can always lower their prices and undercut you or copy you or do the same thing, right? So the only way that you really expand and get out there is to start operating from that creative mindset okay number two you need to start thinking of long-term payout versus the short term all right yes I want to show you how to get money quickly I think getting rich quick is much better than getting rich slowly all right and I'm going to be the, the first to say that and talk about it. You see all these leaders and gurus out there that say, stop chasing the quick buck. You need, you know, and, and some of that is true to a point. But yes, we want to make money quickly. But at the same time, what you need to understand is quickly, maybe a couple months, quickly, maybe a year. For me to get to my first $90,000 a month took three years of working at it. All right. Now, nowhere in the beginning did I even believe it was possible for me to do $90,000 in a month. But you progress over time. And the time's going to pass anyway. That's what most people don't realize. That as long as you're working on your dream every single day, every single day you're getting closer. And the time's passing anyway. So if you had just been sitting on your ass for three months not doing anything, uh, you know, that gets you nowhere close and that three months passed anyway. All right. But if every single day you're working on your dream a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more, you're going to get there over time. And when that three months passes, you're going to be so much closer. You might be crushing it at that point. All right, there's a, a great quote by Tony Robbins that he says, in 10 years, we will certainly arrive. The question is where? All right, and that's such an important thing to remember. It has such a huge impact on me when I heard that the first time. Most people don't think about their future, and they go at a very short-term mindset of trying to make something happen today, and if it doesn't happen, then they quit and they give up. If you think that you're going to start a Shopify business today and make $90,000 next month, you are sadly mistaken, all right? you're going to get frustrated. That's not going to happen. Could it happen? Absolutely. A anything is possible. Is it going to happen? Most likely not. All right. Because it takes time to get to that level and to get to that point and to, to, to do those types of things. You have to learn. There's a learning curve involved in it. All right. There's a lot of trial and error and testing that goes into this behind the scenes. Okay. But the way I'm going to show you is a very low risk, high reward type of trial and error. And if you follow what I'm teaching you and go through it, you're going to be in a good position, okay? Um, you know, I'm not saying quit your job tomorrow, all 
All right. Absolutely not. That was the mistake I made when I started my first business is I just jumped all in. I took a very high risk with a very low reward because I had no sales yet, no nothing. And I just jumped in, quit my job and I went broke very quickly. All right. And put myself in a horrible situation. And then I went back to getting a job and, and working slowly and learning from my mistakes. So what you want to do is put yourself in a position where you're able to do low risk, maintain your lifestyle. Uh, you may have to cut back on your lifestyle. You may have to work hard and sacrifice some things like weekends and nights and, you know, really put the time and effort in. But the question is really going to become how bad do you want it? You know, I'm putting this information out for free and chances are the way statistics go about 10% to 20% of people will actually really follow through with it, you know, and, and that's just how it is. And it's sad, but the truth is that you can be one of those 10 to 20%. All it takes is the dedication and persistence, all right? And I tell you that as somebody who once sat back and looked at people posting big screenshots and wondered, how the hell am I ever going to achieve that? I didn't know, but I knew that I was going to. I knew that I was going to get to that point even when I was negative, you know, whatever. I was like negative $1,000 in my bank account. I didn't have a job. I was close to eviction. I was literally spending, you know, 80 cents to buy a pack of hot dogs for a week. That's what I was eating for an entire week. That's what was keeping me nourished because all I could do is scrape together, you know, a dollar to try to go buy food. And I had a lot of pride. I didn't want to ask for help from anybody. So, you know, to be able to come from that, Trust me, you can do this. It's possible. But are you willing to put in the sacrifices I did? Are you willing to put in the hard work? You know, I got laughed at for a long time and people didn't think it was going to happen. Even my business partner, when I was in my last business and I was telling him about e-commerce, you know, he completely ignored it. It's one of the reasons I walked away. He didn't think it was possible for me to do things like make $90,000 a month on my own from my laptop while traveling the world. But how long are you willing to keep the vision going? How long are you willing to keep fighting for it and going after your dreams? The, the, tr the real truth of it is, is that the percentage of people is small, all right? But if you're willing to do that and you're willing to just constantly push and never give up, you're going to get there. I absolutely can assure you of that. And I can assure you that the system I'm going to show you, if you're willing to not quit right away, if you're willing to test and try and keep on pushing and keep going, then you're going to have that type of success. I can absolutely guarantee that what I'm going to teach you works. I'm not going to guarantee you're going to make $90,000 in a month because there's a lot of variables that go into that. But I can guarantee you that you can get to a full-time income with what I'm going to show you. You can quit your 9-to-5 job forever or replace your 9-to-5 income uh, and you know, be living this type of life where you have the freedom. All right. And as you get better and you get smarter, you learn more. And, you know, once you make some money, the truth is that you become in a position of leverage to actually really start finding a lot more opportunity and doing a lot more things. All right. It's just about being smart with your money and not buying a Benz with the first 30 grand that you make. You know, that's what a lot of these people do out there. They go drop all their money on a new car or something. And, you know, what, what, what purpose did that serve? Right. 30 grand and then it's gone. You know, I'm trying to get to the point where I have 10, 20 million dollars in the bank. All right. So that requires success and then more success and then smart investments and more opportunity and more success. But what I can promise you is the more money you make, the easier it gets. The more skills you get, the easier it gets. And you're able to just keep compounding and keep building on everything you're learning. And what we're going to be learning in here are two of the best skill sets that you can have in today's economy right now. E-commerce and marketing. Facebook ads, just online marketing in general, because by the time I'm done releasing the content I have planned over the next couple months, you're going to be able to be very proficient at online marketing if you go through all of it and if you follow all of it and listen to all of it and put the time in to learn it, you know, because another thing that's crazy, I know that there's a similar group out there um, and I won't mention the name because, you know, I don't, I'm choosing to leave that group, but the guy released some really good free content. Uh, and I've shared that with some people and these people don't even go through it and they're in my inbox asking me questions. How do I do this? How do I make money like you? How do I do what you do? And I'm like, bro, did you even go through the free content that I shared with you? It's like if you're not willing to help yourself, nobody else is going to help you. Success is 100% an individual based thing. Sure, there will be people to help you along the way like I'm helping you right now and people helped me along the way. But at the end of the day, 
what this really is about is is doing it for yourself and creating that success story in your own life. Nobody's going to give it to you. Nobody's going to hand it to you on a silver platter. Even with all the best information at your disposal in the world, you still have to apply it. All right. And so, you know, that's that's what this is all about. Just remember that you control the outcome from this point forward. All right. You absolutely control the outcome. You're going to be shown a sit. Well, you've already been shown a system and a strategy. That's what I showed you in this video, but I'm going to break down each piece now. That was the, the mile high overview, right? Of just what it looks like from an aerial view. And that's the entire strategy I've been using to generate thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars so far this year. Uh, about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales, and that's that's starting halfway through February, and we're not even halfway through September yet. So that's you know averaging about forty grand a month right now um, in sales. So I tell you all that because I want you to know that you control the outcome. You got to give up excuses. You got to be ready to just work and do it and make it happen, and realize that. The very first product you test is probably not going to be a winner. It's probably going to fail. And we're going to talk about all of that because it's it's part of it, right? Like I said, I'm going to break down every single piece of the strategy and the overview that you, we just went through. Um, and that's going to take some time to release all that content. So, um, you know, depending on when you're getting in the group, if you're following this along step by step, it's going to take some time. If you've already, if I've already done it all, then, you know, that's awesome for you because you can just go through it at your leisure. But at the end of the day, it's going to be about going through it, sticking with it, applying it, and putting it to good use, and then, uh, you know, slowly building on your results, okay? I got some more stuff I'll share on Mindset in the future. I hope that that stuff motivated you and got you ready to go um, because it's so important. You know, we need motivation every day. We need people pushing us every day, and we need to constantly be developing our mind. You know, personal development is just as important when it comes to success as an entrepreneur or really success in any type of endeavor personal development is is just as important as learning this skill right you can ask any Olympic athlete you can ask any professional athlete everybody may have a different way of describing personal development but at the end of the day it's always going to take belief it's always going to take hard work it's always going to take dedication it's always going to take giving up all excuses and it's always going to take realizing that you have to set big goals and understand what you want to accomplish and realize that it's all possible for you if you're willing to put the time and effort in. All right. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you for watching. I am really excited to keep going on this journey with you and releasing some more content. Um, I would say in closing to all of this, the thing that you should really focus on now and I'll release maybe, uh, maybe I'll try to put together like a, a study guide that helps with this. But what you should really start doing is asking yourself some questions and doing some research about what type of niches that you think you may be interested in getting involved in. What type of store that you want to have. Now you can wait because I'm going to, in my next video is when I'm actually going to jump into creating a store and talking more about picking a name and, and how to design a store and the thought process behind that. But at the same time, there's no reason you can't put stuff down on paper now. Um, you know, at the very beginning, I, I could show you, you know, I have pages and pages and pages of ideas that I've written down and most of them have gotten scrapped. But, you know, you want to start thinking about that kind of stuff so you can start thinking about what niches you might be interested in going into and testing. Uh, you know, a great way to see niches like we've already seen is to just go to AliExpress and look at all these categories, all right, and then subcategories and stuff that's in there. You want to start looking around and browsing and seeing what you're interested in and what you think could be a good product or a good idea. All right. And uh, you may have some stuff already that you think you want to do, you know, but this is a great way to get started. You can go to Pinterest and look at ideas. Um, you can go to Winello and look at ideas. You can go to, uh, again, what was another one we were looking at? Overstock and look at ideas. Almost any major site. You can go to Amazon. Um, we didn't talk about Amazon as a place for sourcing products because they got a lot of rules. But, you know, you can go to Amazon and look at all the categories in here as well. There's there's tons of them. And then go in and click on something and look at, uh, you know, what type of stuff is in that category when you go to pet supplies. Right. And, you know, it breaks down in the sub niches here and then even sub sub niches. Right. So these are all things that can be ideas for your store. And it's going to take some time. It's going to take some research. If you're absolutely brand new to this and you want to do this, 
which I can't see any reason why you wouldn't because it's the lowest barrier to entry opportunity out there where you don't have to sell people and, you know, try to convince people to buy things. You just have to find products that people already love. Then, you know, it's, I would put some hours into research and looking at things and, and coming up with ideas. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask, drop them in the group. Let me know. Other than that, I look forward to continuing this journey with you and seeing you in the next video until then. Have a great day and live free.